Hi, I'm Dane with Picture Line. We are here today um, to look at the new S5, the Panasonic S5, which we have in store as a first look. I am here chatting with Mike from Panasonic, and I have some questions for you, Mike. Um, this is a really unique camera. I'm really exciting that uh, Panasonic released this. It's a full frame camera, but where does it fit in Panasonic's full frame lineup? You know, that's Can you give me a bearing? It's kind of the, the, the baby brother, I guess, of everybody else in the family. So um, a lot of people like to call it an entry level camera, but I don't like to do that because it is so feature laden and there's so mm -hmm. many features in this camera. I really hate to call it an entry level for our full frame system. I look at S5 as kind of the baby brother or the mini S1H to the mm -hmm. rest of the system. Uh, amazing capabilities of the whole family from S1, S1R, and S1H, all built into one nice small compact body. And the best part about it is it's no bigger than a GH5 and less weight than a GH5. So incredible to have the same size and weight as a GH5 or less and still have the capabilities of full frame technology. Totally. And it seems like there's good parity between uh, the S1, S1R, S1H with the, you know, sensors, size, similar uh, uh, build quality. Um, it's something that it's very, it, picking this up today, I was like, this is completely familiar to all the other S1 cameras. Exactly, it feels very yeah. familiar to the family. And then if you were say a G9 user, here's the funny thing, because I keep mistaking the two. So here is S1 or S5, and here is G9. I mean, they are all- <laughs> Wow, they look similar. Almost the same shape. And yeah. I keep picking up the wrong one all the time. So uh, <laughs> here working out of the house, I've got cameras all over the, uh, the island here in the kitchen. And yeah. if I glance, you know, I have to really think about it because I'll maybe sometimes pick up the G9 or sometimes I'll pick up the S5 by mistake just because they are so small, so lightweight and so close in, in kind of form factor. But of course, totally. as, as you mentioned, um, it is a member of the family. And so because it's a member of the S series family, a lot of the operations are very, very similar. And so it has that same feeling if you're an S1 or an S1H user, so easy to graduate into this and get used to it. Or if you're a GH user or a G9 user and you wanna upgrade to full frame, a very, very simple and easy transition. Well, that kind of leads me to some other questions um, that I've, I've noticed that other people, the burning question is why buy the S5 if you have an S1 and why buy the S5 if you're an S1R? Well, and you get the kind of the permutations there. They're, if you already have an S camera or a GH camera, why would I come to this one? If you're already an S, you, say if you're an S1 user and you're looking mm. for something that's lighter weight, then this is the camera for you. It's still got the dual native ISO and I'm gonna drop a bomb on everybody today. Yes, your S1 has dual native ISO. Wait, what? Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> rumor going around but it is true so s1 and s1 h and now the s5 have dual native iso they are all 24 megapixel sensors they do have dual native technology the difference being s1 h has the ability like an a gh5 s to select which ramp you are using whether it's the high or the low um thing is automatic S5 and S1 are always in automatic mode. So it has the technology and what switches it from the low ramp to the high ramp is just by taking that ISO and running it up past 4,000. Wait, 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 that's a bombshell. That, that's, that, whoa, hold on. So the S1, the S5 and the S1H have... <laughs> yes. Wait, am I not supposed to say that? No, we're good. Okay, cool. Wait, 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 wait. S1, S5, S1H, all have dual native ISO. All dual native ISO. The but the S5 how you has that. And the S5 has the dual ISO that behaves like the S1H? Like the S1, it's in automatic mode. It's in, okay, so it behaves like the S1. System to select the low or the high. It's always right. in auto. So for it to switch over, basically yeah. you jump above ISO 4000. Gotcha, you have to manually peg it. Right. Wow. Exactly. Whereas That's really cool. You actually have three settings, low, high, and automatic. Mm -hmm. S5 and S1 is always in automatic. That's fantastic. Well, my, my next question was, why would you buy this if you have an S1H? But I might want to flip the tables on you, Mike, uh -oh. because I have an S1H and I just pre-ordered this camera. So let me tell you why you should buy this if you have an S1H. <laughs> 
buy an S1, S5. Okay. So I shoot with the S1H. We can talk about that at length. But in short, it's a camera that fits my needs perfectly. Video, some photo, and it's, it's small enough to take on a small shoot, big enough to be on a big studio production. That's the short of it. But I've been looking for a B camera. I've needed a second angle for a variety of reasons, let alone interviews, right? It's always nice to have that second angle. And I've toyed with thinking, maybe I should get a second S1H. That's a big purchase. It's also a big camera. I can't, sometimes a B cam is nice to have a little bit of variance, you know, something smaller, maybe something that does a little, a little differently, right? Right. This S5 shows up and I'm thinking to myself, it's two grand. It has dual native ISO shoots 4k 60 10 bit bam 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 do i need to go on Check but here and then and then i couldn't believe it it has the raw over hdmi output and so you can record ProRes raw which is what i do with my s1h so this camera just turned into this delightful very powerful photo camera that is it holds its weight in a video production that's that's why i bought an s5 that's kind of why I've been using S5. Um, you know, when S5 came out, um, I have the, the wonderful ability to have kind of one of everything from the Lumix line. So <laughs> I kind of choose what I want, whether I want to shoot GH or I want to shoot full frame or I want to shoot an S1H. Um, I have the ability to kind of pick and choose what I want. And I'll be honest with you, I have not put down the S5 ever since it's been in my hands for about three weeks now. I've been shooting video with it. I've been shooting stills with it. Um, it's just an amazing camera and for the ability to walk around with a lightweight camera, no heavier than a GH5, yet still have the technology of, like you mentioned, uh, the very mm -hmm. uh, capabilities, 14 stops of dynamic range like your S1H, mm -hmm. 4K60, unlimited recording, as well as a limit on just 4K, the only limit is on 4K60 10 bit, otherwise mm -hmm. unlimited recording on all the video capabilities. And then we already mentioned dual native ISO. We, were not, we haven't even hit on to live composite for stills, and we haven't hit on yet uh, the ability to do high resolution images up to 96 megapixels. And I'll tell you something about that in a little bit. I know there's a, like a bunch of features we should get into, but I, I just thought of this question. Yeah. And I think this is kind of an interesting way to frame this camera. What does, what does the S5 inherit from its other siblings? Like, because it, it feels like it's packed with a lot of features that come from the other cameras in the lineup. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of features kind of from the entire family. Yeah. So, dual native ISO that I would normally have said would came from S1H, but that comes from S1. Also comes from our GH line. High resolution mode, uh, you know, high ISO capability, unlimited recording rates. I mean, all those features just... Mm -hmm now built into one camera that's kind of a hybrid that does all those things perfectly. And you mentioned raw output. So as of probably about December of this year, raw mm -hmm. output will be available for this camera at 5.9K in ProRes RAW. So all those mm -hmm. features are all now built into uh, what they originally have been calling kind of the uh, entry level camera, which I really hate to use. I love to call it, you know, the baby brother or a transitional camera. Totally. It definitely doesn't feel like a lesser camera. It feels more like Panasonic took all these features and then squeezed them into a new body. We wanted a new form factor, and that's, that's what's really compelling. Yeah. Um, you know, when we originated uh, S1 and S1R and S1H, you know, they were built as professional tools. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I always tell everybody, you know, if I was stuck in the middle of somewhere and I had to pound a nail, I probably could do it with an S1 and it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> right. But, you know, now we've kind of brought down the construction a little bit, so we're lighter weight. Uh, but still have all yeah. the features built into an affordable body. We're hearing a lot about the new autofocus system. Right. And I've been testing that out here today and it's, uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, can you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? So there's a vast improvement on the algorithms that are built into this camera for the autofocus capabilities. Uh, you know, and I will use the word groundbreaking because I think uh, hmm. capabilities now of what it is now compared to what it was, is quite different. Uh, so in this camera and well in the rest of the family coming up in firmware enhancements by the end of the year, you will all see these uh, algorithm changes. And the most place that you will see that is in facial recognition. So in the facial recognition setting and the tracking setting, probably the two things that I kind of use the most, um, you will find that it is super, super fast and vastly mm -hmm. improved. 
as well as it is improved than everything else as well. So single point, uh, custom multi, which is another favorite of mine. Everything is improved, but the vast improvement really is in the first two, which is tracking and of course, facial recognition. And facial recognition now includes eye tracking, facial recognition. It'll now focus in on the face. If you turn to your side, it will actually focus onto the body. It will use full torso. There's also Ooh. animal detection as well built in. So it's very, very robust and a big but, from where it was before. That's amazing. I was testing out that uh, in the continuous autofocus mode today with the 70 to 200 at a 2.8 aperture. So a lot, you know, that's, it's quite challenging. And um, I, I had one of my colleagues walk around the store and it kept track of the eye, the face. And when they turned, you, you saw the outline just take over, uh, outline their body and then just laser back in on their eye when it saw it. It was exactly. really impressive. As they turn away from the camera, it will go to either head detection or mm -hmm. detection as we call it. So it'll either focus on their, their head or their torso. And then of course, as they come back or bring their eyes to camera, then it'll definitely pick up on the eyes and then go back to eye focus. And that's, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you said that those updates are gonna to come to the rest of the S line. Um, yeah. Again, line. that feature parity across the entire line is really powerful because now you choose a camera based on what fits you kind of almost literally in your hand, but you're still getting the top notch features despite uh, the model. That's really cool. I've also noticed just like all the other cameras in the S line and the GH line for that matter, um, we, we have in-body stabilization. Can you tell me about how that compares to its other siblings? <laughs> Pretty much it's all the same. It's the five axis image stabilization built in mm. body with this 24 megapixel chip. Uh, the main difference being that you get five and a half uh, frames or five and a half stops of image stabilization with a uh, OIS lens. So a lens that has yeah. Stabilization, you get up to five and a half stops. So it's not quite as strong as you might see in an S1H that might get you up to about six or six and a half with some lenses, but you'll get a good five and a half stops. And I'll be honest with you, uh, as we all know, Panasonic is known for their image stabilization. Everyone else tries to copy it and hasn't even got close. Uh, it's the same butter smooth operation that we are all used to that makes us look so good, whether we're uh, walking with a gimbal or without a gimbal. Uh, I find that most of the time I can do most things without a gimbal and be butter smooth, whether I'm panning or walking or whatever I'm doing in cinematography, uh, that image stabilization really helps. And then, of course, uh, me as a still shooter, I'm able to hold, you know, shots down to half a second, sometimes two seconds because of that image stabilization. If I really try really mm -hmm. hard, it's amazing. I'm glad you mentioned it that way. Um, what one of the big features that drew me into the Panasonic ecosystem was actually the image stabilization, especially as a video shooter, because like you said, I use a gimbal. I use a lot of different rigs for my cameras, but I'm always a fan of the handheld organic feel. Yeah. And that image stabilization goes a long way, not just for little jitters, but I can actually do camera movements as if it's on some type of rigging. It's phenomenal. Ph phenomenal. And pff, it's phenomenal. And I'm, and that's great to hear that this borrows that same technology. Same technology that we've used and it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I, it blows me away, even as a still shooter, I rely now on image stabilization. You know, if you were to tell me two or three years ago, uh, oh, your camera's gonna have image stabilization, I would have said, ah, I'm rock solid, I can handle it. Yeah. But, you know, whether you got long glass or it's a late night and you've got a long shutter speed, mm -hmm. I rely image stabilization, whether I'm shooting still photography or of course for video all the time. And yeah. the Panasonic stabilization is second to none. And I'll just add on to that, being an S1H shooter and seeing some of the uh, settings inside of this camera, it's not that there's just st image stabilization built in. You have, in these cameras, you have lots of customization and different strengths and, uh, and forms of the stabilization where you can lock it off, right. like as if it's on a tripod or just or just a little bit to smooth it out. And it, and it works across the different crop modes and resolutions, which is, um, you don't see that in other cameras. Correct, so you can you know, lock it off if you need, if you're on sticks mm -hmm. and panning, or you can set it up to where it will not track when it's panning, so that it's only doing the up and down uh, adjustments. So there are so many different features built into this camera, whether it's for the image stabilization, mm -hmm. for the video recording, it's the video codex, you know, dual native ISO, you name it. Uh, there are so many features. We can get into LUTs, being able to preview LUTs. We can get into, you know, de-squeezing cinematics, mm -hmm. shooting anamorphic. There are just so many features built into this camera. It is feature rich. Yeah. And it feels, it feels amazingly familiar. It feels 
it's a new form factor, but it's just the camera that I, I'm, I'm familiar with. And it, I noticed today when I picked it up, uh, it's like I, I knew where everything was. It didn't miss a beat. I know these, I know the dials, and that's critical when you're working that working in a professional space. You don't want you don't want to be trying to fiddle with things. You want to know where everything is. It's clear cut. It's familiar. Well, that answers my questions. <laughs> I'm glad I could do that. Yeah, uh, this I, I think this is very in depth, and I'm. Um, we didn't even get into the, the, that you can power it and charge it through the USB-C. There are just a lot of features into this that um, I think when you get this into your hands, you, you just start playing and you get um, to explore a whole ton. Yeah, we could spend more than an hour just going over the features of this camera. There are so many. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are technically heavy, you know, so there's a lot of, it's not mm -hmm. just things. You know, they're, they're hardcore as far as, you know, V-log and de-squeezing CinemaScope and all that kind of crazy stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it's a feature, feature rich camera at an affordable price that gives you all the benefits of the Lumix system from uh, dual native ISO we talked about to, you know, amazing image stabilization, video codecs. And I hate to say it, everybody says, oh, it's a Lumix, so it's a video camera. I'm a still shooter and I've switched mm -hmm. everything that I've shot from the other manufacturer and I shoot mm. everything on my Lumix now. So, you know, I'm either grabbing an S5 or I'm grabbing an S1R or I'm grabbing yeah. an S1H and that's what I shoot all my professional work with now. There we go. Well, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. That was awesome. Um, I'll let you know what I think once I get my S1H or my S5. <laughs> Please do. Please do.